I accidentally drowned the boy I bullied when I was 8 years old. Context, I was a bully, or however you wanna call it, me and my mates used to pick on a boy in our class, because he was short and ginger. One day, we went to a school trip to a swimming pool, I was having fun with some friends when this boy, let's call him Tom, appeared, I approached him and started to mess around. I decided it could be a funny idea if I drowned him, like pull him underwater then take him out of the water several times. When I stopped with my joke he had really drowned, teachers tried CPR, didn't work. It's been almost 8 years now and I'm living in a foster home. I deeply regret everything, it feels like I haven't slept in years, whenever I try to close my eyes I see his face. I killed a kid because I wanted to have fun and be cool. The worst thing is that I knew it was wrong, I knew I was being mean and an idiot to an innocent boy, but I didn't care, I have him hell until his death. I wish I had drowned and not him. I have social anxiety, I can't even leave my house some days, I am unable to talk to people properly and I am terrified to death of police cars, with those flashing blue and red lights, and police officers. I am in therapy, but I feel like I deserve nothing, because even I feel bad, Tom is dead, and that is even worse. I tried talking to his family, but they hate me, of course. I can't explain this to anyone, because everyone in my town knows who I am and what I did, so I have nobody to talk with. I hope I will be able to overcome this one day. I stole and masturbated into my co-workers panties. I am a 32 year old married man in a dead bedroom situation. I work at a decently large company and have a very attractive co-worker in an office just down the hall with me. We flirt a lot and are quite comfortable and close with each other, but have never done anything that could be thought of as physical cheating. Last year she had an affair with a guy and she felt comfortable enough with me to share this fact. I've had my share of fantasies where she and I hook up as well, so knowing that she cheated on her husband already made it even hotter for me. I was in her office while she was out of the office for a vacation trying to locate a file that she told me she had on her desk if I needed to double check something on it. Well, while searching for it, I stumbled across a shoebox in her drawer. Inside the box was a pair of panties, sexy lingerie, and a thumb drive. I'm not a good person, so I snooped and checked out the thumb drive too. Turns out, the underwear and lingerie were what she was wearing the night she cheated on her husband, and also on the thumb drive were her naughty photos of the event. This got my banana hard instantly. I was so wrapped up in that I shut my office door, turned out the lights and crawled under my desk to masturbate into her panties. I then put the panties back in the box along with the thumb drive, not before making a copy of the photos for myself, and put it all back in the drawer where I found it. I'm not a good person, but if my wife would just fuck me, maybe I wouldn't have these issues. I spat on my boss's coffee when he wasn't in the room. My boss is a male genital and has always been one. Two days ago at work my boss was being very rude to literally everyone at work. Very minor, and fixable. Common mistakes were made for me and my co-workers at the beginning of the day, and for the next three hours every time our boss was around he called us embarrassing and childish. Everything that had gone wrong at the start of work was already fixed but he just kept on mocking us. At my lunch break I heard my boss talk to one of my co-workers right outside the dining room about how everyone was stupid and how no one could do their job right. I was furious. Next thing I know, he comes in and puts his coffee at the table next to mine and walks out to get something. I was pissed at this point so I decided to open his thermos and vacuum flask, load the biggest chunk of spit I could in my mouth and slowly drop it in and close it as fast as I could. I was already finished eating my meal so I left the room immediately. A few minutes later I see him walking around the workplace with the coffee in his hand drinking it and it put a huge smile on my face. My blood got into the muffins I baked for a school dance back in grade 10, my class had to bake sweets for the upcoming school dance. I was working with a partner and I had the job of baking them while my partner had the job of decorating them. I really hated a group of people that I thought were gonna be at the dance, so when I got a nosebleed, it gave me the opportunity to intentionally drip the blood into the muffin batter when no one was looking. When the muffins were done, they looked pretty normal and everything but I knew there was a hint of blood in all of them. I went to the dance, and unfortunately the people I hated didn't show up, but instead other random students ate the muffins. I felt disgusted with what I did and especially disgusted when I overheard a couple people complain about how the muffins tasted funny. Very few were eaten so the word must have got out that they were gross. No one got sick or infected or anything but still I can't believe I did something that sick. I'm definitely not messed up like that anymore and I would never do anything like this ever again. At my work there's mouthwash available in the bathroom. Never used it, 
but if you want to you can take a little plastic cup and use the plump to fill it. One day I felt horny at work and decided to jerk off in the bathroom. When I was almost done I decided to use one of the plastic cups to cleanly dispose of my semen. Once I was actually done I somehow decided it would be fun to empty the little plastic cup in the mouthwash, so I tool out the pump and poured my sperm in the mouthwash where it was consequently floating around like a cloud. When I used the same bathroom again a couple of hours later, I saw that the cloud was split up and one half was halfway up the tube of the pump. When I checked again a couple of days later it was entirely gone. I have no idea what happened with it. Hopefully it is cleaned and somebody put some fresh mouthwash in. Does that make me a bad person? Probably yes. So, for the past month, my roommates, male and female, have been really annoying. I could hear them having hanky-panky love time at 3 a.m. Not only that they've been stealing my goddamn food. I don't mind them having sex, but they steal happy big pimp's food? No one's getting my Doritos. So, I did what any normal person does. I've been jerking off in their body wash. That body wash was never empty after I've been shooting my venom in it. So, a week passes by. They tell me that she's pregnant. My guy roommate said it was probably because the condom broke. Yeah, he said it in a very retarded way. Normally, I'd be like they'll never know that's my baby snort snort but... I'm Mexican. And she's really white. So, I gotta move out quickly and find a new place before they start scratching my pee pee really hard. What would you guys do? I need help. Should I tell them via email? I don't know. I pretended to be a guy online and a woman moved halfway across the country to be with someone that didn't exist because I was too scared to tell the truth. I've never, ever told anyone this, and have never even written it down. From late 1999 to early 2001, I pretended to be a man online and had several women that I communicated with daily through email, nearly all of whom wanted to have a relationship with me. I created an entire backstory for this fake man, and the backstory was so consistent that it seemed real, even to me. I found older women, in their late 40s slash 50s, through dating sites and just by contacting random strangers through instant messenger. I was never flirty with them, never sexual, nothing like that, but all of the women I emailed with were vulnerable in some way. A couple of them were unemployed and living with family, one of them was marginally employed but suffered from poor health, another was recently divorced, another was just looking for some sort of adventure in her life. I liked the attention. I liked always having emails waiting for me. I liked it that I was someone these people admired. It eased my loneliness, at the time, I was a 14 year old high school student stuck in a new town in the middle of nowhere with no one to talk to. I didn't like people my own age and had no real interest in the stuff teenagers are normally into. Like I said, it was never romantic, I'm a straight female, and on a few occasions that a woman would make it clear that she wanted a romantic relationship with me, I ended it. I told them at the time that I was only looking for friends, and that I thought women made better pen pals. I gave them some BS about women being easier to talk to, open to new ideas, etc., but really all it was was that I was afraid if I had a male pen pal, he'd eventually realize that he wasn't talking to another man. I would take stories from my own life or stories I had heard, spin them a little, and make them part of this man's background. I planned out what college he'd gone to during what years, what towns he had lived in, what jobs he'd had, what countries he had traveled in, what businesses he had owned. I made details about his childhood, even right down to what the wallpaper in his childhood bedroom had looked like. I had an entire timeline of his life so that the story would be consistent from person to person, so that I would never be caught in my own lie. His life was a reflection of what I wanted my life to be at that age, and so I was sort of living through this character. And it worked. People believed me. Like I said, I found some of these women through dating sites, but I had no intention of being romantic with them. Whenever one of them contacted me through the dating site, I always had an excuse as to why I didn't want a romantic online relationship, the profile is sort of old, and I'm seeing someone right now I really want to get to know you first etc. A few of them were surprisingly fine with just being friends. It's just that dating sites are a good place to find people who are willing to open themselves up to another person, remember this was the early 2000s, before there were a lot of pen pal sites. I happily hid behind this persona online and eventually began instant messaging every day with this one woman named Pat. Pat was going through a rough time in her life, she was deeply in debt, unemployed, living with her sister, whom she despised. There had been a domino effect of bad happenstances that had occurred in her life over the course of a few years that had landed her in that position. 
Pat was in her early 50s, and I got so that I really enjoyed talking with her. She was smart and funny and open to talking about all the new ideas that were fermenting in my teenaged head, which I pretended were coming from a 50-something dude who was undergoing an emotional awakening after a lifetime of emotional suppression. She didn't have anything better to do and I, being a now 15-year-old teenager on summer break in a town where I had no friends, didn't have anything better to do either. Pat lived in Minnesota, and I told her that I lived in southern Florida near the ocean. She loved hearing about what the ocean looked like that day, I knew how to access webcams of the ocean, she did not, so I would just tell her what the waves looked like. I even sent her some shells from a beach when I vacationed in Florida late that summer, so that the postal code stamp would be near where I had told her that I lived. I made up historical facts to tell her, which were completely false, I went through relationship dramas as this man that she advised me on, I told her of spiritual awakenings that I'd experienced, she told me things she said she'd never told anyone, etc. I found pictures online of a random nobody and sent those to her, claiming it was me. I found other pictures of a random house and sent those to her, claiming it was my home. We were good friends. It's just that I wasn't who she thought I was. Pat very nearly caught me a few times, because sometimes she wouldn't believe what I'd said and she would tell me she didn't know if I was real. I always managed to smooth it over somehow. However, she wanted to talk to me on the phone and worse, she wanted to meet me. In fact, by the end, she insisted on it. By that time, she had started working again and had some money. She also wanted out of her situation and to start over. I don't know why I did this, but, eventually we got to talking about her coming to live with me at an entirely fake address in southern Florida. We planned it all out meticulously and had known each other for a year. I even told her that I had a friend who was a business owner and would give her a job. This was the only time I spoke to Pat on the phone, when I was pretending to be this friend with a business and I interviewed her for a job that didn't exist in a small business that didn't exist. She wanted to speak to me, the fake me, on the phone, and somehow I always managed to beg her off, telling her that my phone was broken, which was ridiculous, since most internet still ran off the phone line in those days, and that I would call her soon, soon, I promise, soon. I would lay awake at night, telling myself that I had to tell Pat who I really was. This woman was about to uproot her entire life to be with someone who didn't exist. But I felt like I was in too deep and a big part of me really believed this lady would connect the dots and wouldn't really go through with it. I was also 15, and scared of getting in trouble, with who? I don't know. The day came when she was going to fly from Minnesota to the airport near where I lived in southern Florida. We had one last instant messenger conversation, with her very excited about her new life and with me assuring her that I would see her in just a few hours, that I would be there to pick her up, I'd have a sign and balloons and everything. I gave her a made up phone number to reach me with. I agreed that she could stay at my place for a few weeks until she got a couple of paychecks under her belt and she could find her own place. It was like I was watching a stranger typing those words to Pat, like I was on autopilot, like it wasn't real. She had told me that she had never taken this big of a chance, but that for once in her life, she wanted adventure, adventure like the kind I, or rather, my fake persona, had had in his life. She was tired of being scared of life and wanted to embrace it. Those next several hours were torturous. I tried to act normal at home but it was impossible. Again, I really believed that she would wise up and call it off at the last minute. Unfortunately, she didn't. A day later, I get an absolutely irate email from Pat, demanding to know where I was. The phone number had connected her to a dry cleaners. The business didn't exist, according to the yellow pages. Three more emails came throughout the course of the next 36 hours. She was writing the email from a library and only had enough money to stay at a hotel another few nights and then she didn't know what she was going to do since she didn't have enough money to get back home. She said she had never taken a leap of faith in her entire life, and that she had trusted me because she just needed one person in the world who she could trust and who believed she was a worthwhile human being after all of the stuff that had happened to her in the past few years. She berated herself for being an idiot, for being misled, for going with her heart instead of her brain. It tore me up. Look, I realized that both she and I made mistakes, but it tore me the hell up to know that there was a lady out there somewhere, someone I considered a friend, despite everything, that was going through such turmoil, and that I had caused it. Her last email was one last attempt to get in touch with me, pleading to please answer her. She must have realized by that time that I wasn't real but was hoping I could somehow help her out anyway but there was nothing I could do. I never answered. In fact, I shut down that entire email address and put that entire episode behind me. 
I don't know what happened to her. There were so many red flags she should have seen, the fact that I wouldn't speak to her on the phone being the biggest. I think she was desperately looking for something in her life, and however temporarily, I managed to give it to her, maybe she just wanted to believe and so she ignored her rational mind. But you know that episode of The Simpsons where Bart writes fake love letters to Mrs. Crabapple, who believes they are from a real guy? And how torn up Bart is when he realizes how upset and humiliated Mrs. K will be when she realizes she's been duped. That's how I felt. I let the whole thing go too far, and I must have really hurt and humiliated someone. I feel terrible about that. It wasn't right, I shouldn't have done it, no excuses, period. Every time this memory pops into my head, I get that cold feeling of shame all throughout my body. I don't even totally know why I did all this. Pat, wherever you are, I am sorry.